What's up, guys? Uh, well, I didn't know me. I had to do this. I'm out of here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> say, uh, 18 months, man. I mean, obviously, you know the battles to get back here. I mean, what's, what's the emotion like for you right now? Man, I'm, I'm happy to be back. Um, it, it's crazy because it, it's been 18 months, but it feels like I, just, I was just here. You know, it feels, it feels like I, I just fought. I just saw you guys. Um, it's crazy how fast time goes. These starts and stops that you kind of had to have in your career, I mean, how mentally taxing is it, right? I mean, it, it's got to be difficult along the way sometimes to think, like, am, am I doing something wrong or is this not for me? Yeah, no, I, I don't have the it's not for me uh, mindset, but I'm, it's, it's tough, you know? It's like I, I, I want to stay healthy. I want to be active, uh, be consistent, and then it's like always something happens with me. It's like I have all this momentum and I'm doing so well, and then it's like sideline side for a year, sideline for 15 months, now 18 months, but, uh, you know, I... I made up my mind. I'm like, this is the, the last injury. Maybe I just needed to get it strong for the road ahead. That's awesome. Uh, talk about the matchup itself, right? Because on, on paper, it looks like it's going to be fireworks. So what do you think about Dan as an opponent? Yeah, it's going to be a tough fight. You know, Dan, is a, he's a good guy. He's super well-rounded. He comes from a great camp, great coaches, everything about him. You know, um, he's never been finished, super durable, um, jiu-jitsu black belt. I see a lot of similarities in him and I. Um, so, yeah, I'm prepared for a 15-minute sprint. You know, I hope it doesn't go that long. I know the fans and everyone's excited for this matchup. Um, you know, I was going to fight someone in front of me, but couldn't get cleared. And I think more people are excited about this just because of our styles. And, yeah, so it's like I'm not looking forward to that, but, uh, but, I, but I'm glad someone is. Last thing for me, I mean, a, a win here, obviously a big one for you, but do you think about like rankings and where it puts you? I mean, you've had this layoff, so it's like, where do you fit in? And do you even allow yourself to look forward anymore without jinxing yourself or something? So do you think about what comes next with this? I, I do and I used to a lot, but now I'm just focused on the task at hand because, yeah, I want to be a world champion. I want to fight, you know, the, the best guy in the world, but all that means nothing if I don't win on Saturday night. So. You know, I just have to, to perform well and, 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 you know, do what I know I'm capable of. And uh, I do feel like I get a big win. I, I put on a show, make a statement. I feel like I'm right back in the mix um, of po possible title contention because everybody in front of me has fought each other and they fought the best. I'm one of the few that hasn't got to. I just want the opportunity. And uh, I, I guarantee that would be an exciting fight. But I have to win Saturday or that means nothing. Josh, right, right here. Uh, when Dan was out here, I, I, actually, I think the fighter that you were originally tied to was Arnold Allen, correct? And I asked Dan about that, and he said there, in his words, there is no question fans are more excited to see me fight Josh Emmett than yeah. Arnold Allen. So I assume you're in the same boat? Yeah, no, I 100% I agree. You know, it's like everyone in the UFC is tough. It's like uh, even someone making their debut, it's like the thing with MMA and these four-ounce gloves, anything can happen, you know? So it's like whether you're fighting someone and making their debut or you're fighting one of the best guys in the world, it's, uh, it's just so crazy. That's what's so crazy about this sport. It's like the unknowing, you know? I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I hope for the best, but it's, it's like I always say, driving my car into a tree with no seatbelt. I hope for the best, but who knows what's going to happen. Uh, but I think fans are excited to see this car wreck coming up on Saturday night just because of the similarities and, and he's, he comes forward and, and the pressure he puts on and he, he's so durable. He'll take shots and you can't get him out of there. He just keeps coming, keeps coming. And I'm the same way too. I, I will never give up. You know, you literally have to put me out or catch me in something, you know, but I won't quit. Like, that, that's a promise, you know. Bone sticking out of my finger, no ACL. Whatever it is, I, I'm not quitting. Well, kind of going off of that, I think it, since your last fight, the division's been pretty active. There's been a lot of matchups among the top ten. You yourself said you haven't really fought a lot of the, those elite guys. Did you hear a lot of fans kind of fantasy matchmaking you against these guys, even in your time off? Like, they still remember who Josh Emmett is. They, you just couldn't fight. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. It's uh, just because no one knows what goes into this. You, you guys know, like everyone else, it's like all the work we put into it. And like, they just think we show up on Friday or Saturday night fight. And then like people were asking me two months after, when are you fighting again? I'm like, damn, I have no ACL. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, every time, any 45er fighting on the card, I'm like, watch, they're gonna say, Josh Emmett needs to fight this guy. And it's like the guy's making his debut and then they're like, Josh Emmett needs to fight him. I'm like, 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But it's funny. At least my name has been in the, the conversation and talks with the fans and a lot of people for 18 months. So it is it is nice, you know, in a sense, even though I, I really don't care, um, that I, I'm still talked about, you know. So people didn't completely forget about me this time. Do you like being tied to that guy that is in these back and forth wars? or? Is like, cause people just, they, they want to see you fight these guys cause they think it's going to be this, like, as you said, car wreck. Yeah. Um, no, I, and it's kind of like, uh, just how like Justin Gaethje, how he goes out there, he wants to perform and stuff. And I, I have that mindset, like I'm going out for performance bonuses, but even though I don't really want it deep down inside of me, I want to have the craziest fight of the year fight and get that knockout of the night with like a minute left you know I, I want two bonuses I, I want I want that money and in, I'm in the entertainment business so it's like I know what fans want to see I know what Dana White wants to see I know what the matchmakers want to see um, and, and that's why I, I, I try to put on these fights I've never been in a, a boring fight even from my first amateur fight and I never will be I, I come from a wrestling background I, I feel like I could go out there and take people down and just grind them out and win lackluster decisions but like I, I wouldn't be in the place that I am. I wouldn't have a lot of these like records and things like that. And uh, you know, it's, that, that's what I'm a, I'm aiming to, you know, please the crowd and uh, everything. You know, since I'm not like I'm not gonna go out and just start talking all trash to people I don't know. You know, it's just like that's not my style. But I promise you, I'll be in the most exciting fight anytime I'm on a card. Josh, in in the middle here. Uh, so maybe I just missed it, but you have a nickname, which is the Fighting Falmer, right? And that's an Elder Scrolls <laughs> reference, kind of. I, tell me a little bit about this. No, so this is when um, so on Reddit. You know, I've done a few of the AMA, um, you know, interviews on Reddit, and and a lot of the people there. Like, what name haven't I I heard of? Like, people think. Uh, like powder, like Falmers. I, I look like Baraka, uh, Voldemort. Like you know, it's like uh, like all these. Uh, I can just go on and on. It's really funny, you know. But uh, so yeah, it was just like you know, the Reddit crowd is just crazy. So I was doing this this charity event for a, a children's hospital and trying to raise money. That's not my nickname, but because they 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 talk about that so much, I said if I can raise over this certain amount, I would I would. I would walk out as the fighting Falmer, or I'd be I'd be announced as him, you know. Um, but they they did not uh, reach that goal, and so uh, yeah, that's that's not my name. I, I've heard other uh, nicknames and stuff like Wikipedia. It's like, but people are doing that. I'm like, I don't have a nickname, <laughs> and I've been announced even on ESPN and stuff like that. They announced me as uh, what was it? I don't know, it was like just something weird. I was like, oh my God, they put that on Fox or ESPN, whatever it was at the time. I'm like, I, I don't have a nickname. <laughs> so you're not, you're not much of a gamer then? <laughs> um, I, I used to be, but just not, not, not now. You know, I like, if, I, if I get on like Call of Duty or start doing something like that, like, yeah, I probably won't be training because I'll be sleeping. You know, it'll be 5 a.m. and I'm like, oh shit, I haven't slept. I gotta be here in you know, an hour. So uh, yeah, not anymore. I used to be a big gamer, but now I'm all about, I've been, diving deep into the, the crypto space and NFTs and uh, man, that, that took me down the rabbit hole and that's one of the things I appreciate with uh, having this injury. Like I put hundreds of hours into the whole space and just educating myself on it and you know, it's, yeah, it's been fun. All right, best of luck, Josh. Thank you. Do you, do you know what a Falmer is? Yeah, I, I know exactly what the little <laughs> character is and yeah. Does he look like me? Yeah. They're, I mean, they're blind goblins. <laughs> yeah, they, they look like, yeah, almost like Golem, too. People say I look like Golem, too. You know, it's a little bit of what anything, so. Hey, Josh, or back orcs, here. yeah, that was another thing. If they raised enough money, I was going to come out as like an orc, and then the fa fighting Falmer was like the <laughs> biggest one, but they were just shy of all of them, so it would have been fun, though. Yes, back here. So as stated, you've had a lot of bad luck with injuries and layoffs and things like that. Has it been at times hard to stay motivated? And if so, what has been the factor that's been driving you back and keeping you motivated? Yeah, it's, um, man, a lot of it's family. Like to me, like what I'm trying to achieve and accomplish and just set my family up and help my friends and family and, and coaches and everyone that invests in me and, and believes in me, you know, I, I, I want to... I want to do well because the, the better I do, then the better they're all going to do as well. Uh, just, you know, I, I have a close circle that I, I've had for you know, most of my life, and I have a bunch of high school friends that, you know, I, I just have a tight circle and everything like that. So, um, 
yeah, that, that motivates me. And, you know, uh, even going back to, I, I just talked about in my, my fighter meeting, I, I didn't, I haven't talked about this, but 2020 was tough for a lot of people. And, you know, I, I lost my older brother and, uh, and my grandpa and, uh, just like the, the pain and the, the sorrow, like the pain I felt, it was just something different. And uh, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> even just my, my mom, it was uh, the pain just motivated me. Like I, uh, when I didn't want to get up and I was hurt and yeah, it was, it was tough. So I, I funneled that into somewhat positive energy and I like, it motivated the hell out of me. So this fight means something so big to me. And, uh, yeah. Sorry. Going, going uh, through loss last year, a lot of people did. How did you find your way through that? Man, just like what I was going through with a knee injury, it's like, ah, that's nothing that, you know, even my older brother, he, he went through his whole life, a lot of mental illness, addiction, um, you know, even my father, I lost him 10 years ago. It's like, yeah, so I think uh, I'm going to fight someone in a controlled setting. And, you know, it's like, I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of anything. Like, you know, I'm, the only thing is the loss. I'm scared to lose. That's the only thing that scares me. But, um, yeah, you just got to keep moving forward. You got to realize life is, life is too short. Time goes by too fast. So I'm like, if you, <laughs> if you, like, been thinking about someone or, you know, they're on your mind, just reach out to them. Tell, say hi, say I love you, you know, just let them know. On a lighter side, are you a Bitcoin maxi or an altcoin degen? I'm all about it, you know. Uh, yeah, definitely in Bitcoin and, and, and yeah, altcoin degen. You know, I, I've been diving deep into it and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm managed by Vayner Sports and, and just from knowing, um, like Gary V talking about a lot of stuff and his brother AJ and, um, you know, I was into crypto when they were launching their, or he was launching his V friends, and I had the opportunity to get in. I didn't understand NFTs at the time back in March and April, and uh, you know, after I s saw how, you know, just like the utility and everything behind him, I, I like looked into that, did all my research, and then just have regrets about that. But I'm in now, so I'm I'm uh, looking to flip my way up to a V friend. Are you going to make your own uh, crypto punk for you? <laughs> No, nah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Like, I, I've thought about things in the past, but, uh, um, yeah, we just have to create something really good for the community and uh, have good utilities, just kind of like a lot of these blue chip uh, NFTs and stuff like that. But you never know. I, I need some, uh, yeah, I need some help with that, some of the developers and people that help me out with that down the road. Cool. Josh, you always bring it. You're rarely in a boring fight. But even with your time away, fan favorite, so it's already like, a, like the icing on the cake. Is there even more icing on the icing that you get that uh, main event preliminary billing and we'll get that ESPN2 and ESPN Plus exposure coming back? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's a, you know, that's a, a good thing. Like, in my mind, I, I've, I've always wanted to fight on a, a main card of a pay-per-view. I still haven't yet. Um, so I wanted to fight, you know, this is the biggest card of the year. I, I, I wanted to uh, you know, be on the pay-per-view and, and happy to have the fans back. But then just knowing that the UFC, at least they see a lot of conviction in Ige and I that, you know, we're going to put on a hell of a fight. It's going to be entertaining. So they're kind of using us to hopefully get more people to buy the pay-per-view. Um, and more people are going to see it, you know, if you, if you talk about um, from like a viewership standpoint, there's going to be so much more eyes, I think, on our fight than if I was maybe opening the pay-per-view. You know, I, I'm not sure. I, I think the Poi Oliveira, they'll, they'll do good numbers, you know. Um, so so it, is, it is good that, you know, I hope I can put on a spectacular performance and, and get a, a huge win. And, um, yeah, so it, so it is nice to be on that, that headlining the prelims. Sounds good, my man. And just in case, one day maybe do one for charity where you do all the nicknames and you could be Voldemort the fighting Baraka yeah. or something. I like it. I like it. Maybe we'll try that. Thanks, we'll man. Try that soon. Thank you, bud. Uh -huh. Thank you.